continuing our study in the book of Colossians chapter 3 and our main section is going to be verses 12 through 17. Our subject in Colossians is being transformed together and our subject today is the renovated heart. A heart that is changed, a heart that is formed by God. Changed, renovated. How many of you enjoy renovations in your office or home? How many love the process? Oh, okay. Yeah, there's Mike and a couple of others. I was in a building as I drove up there. I found out, oh my goodness, Mike built this building. I was really glad to go into the classroom and really glad to enjoy the facilities, but it looked like a lot of work. It gets messy when there's a renovation on, especially if it's a building that's being pulled apart, or your home that's being pulled apart. How many of you ladies just love cooking in the kitchen when they have everything pulled apart in the house? Yeah, okay, no hands on that one. We don't like renovation. It's dirty, it's messy, but the end result, we love. We're glad that we did it at the end of the day, and you know what? I'm really hoping you're going to be glad that you allow God to do some renovation in your heart today. Amen. And maybe it's going to hurt a little. Maybe it's going to tug. Maybe there's something that you're not really wanting to give up. I'm telling you what. Give it up. And at the end of this service, you're going to go out dancing and singing because it's a happy day. Because you let God do that work in your heart. On Ethiopian New Year's, we heard a very special song from my brother here. I wonder if we shouldn't hear it one Sunday morning. It blessed me. And he talked about God who healed my heart, healed my life, took care of me. And I was listening to that. And I thought, wow. I think, did you write it too? He wrote it and he sang it. Oh, it was good. And it was a song about a renovated heart. You've healed my heart. Wow. We come with so many struggles, so many, so many disappointments, so many hurts. We bring those, and God is ready to take all of that, and He's ready to bring the healing by doing His renovation. And that's what we're talking about today. So you have come to work today. Are you ready? Okay, 12 of you are ready. Okay, what about the rest of you? I don't know what we're going to do about that, but we need you to get to work. We got a lot of putting off, putting on, letting in, and letting out. It's all going to happen before you leave. Don't look at the clock. The clock is right, although I think it's running a bit fast. But the clock is correct. Don't look at that until the work is done. We're not leaving. Amen. Oh, good. <laughs> all right. First thing we're going to do is look at this passage that we're going to study today from Colossians 3, The Renovated Heart. And we're going to look back a little bit into last week, two verses from last week, and then we're going to get into this week's section. Colossians chapter 3, and I'm going to ask you if you would stand and read it with me. Colossians 3, 9 through 17. You have taken off your old self with its practices and have put on the new self which is being renewed in knowledge in the image of its creator. Therefore, as God's chosen people, holy and dearly loved, clothe yourselves with compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. Bear with each other and forgive one another if any of you has a grievance against someone. Forgive as the Lord forgave you. And over all these virtues put on love, which binds them all together in perfect unity. Let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, since as members of one body you are all to peace and be thankful. Let the message of Christ dwell among you richly as you teach and admonish one another with all wisdom through psalms, hymns, and songs from the Spirit. 
singing to God with gratitude in our hearts. And whatever you do, whether in word or deed, do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. The Lord bless the reading of his word. Let's take our seats again. Amen. Put off. We read it in verse 9. <clears throat> we put off the old self with all of its practices, the old man. And last week we learned a lot about that, and we don't need to go through the list from, from those first verses, from 5 up to, up to 9. They talk about what we all know as the old man. And the old man was not a good guy. He needs to be put off. The old self needs to be gone. And then, beautifully, we put on, we put on the new self. The new self, which is being renewed in knowledge in the image of its creator. Created in the image of God. I love that. All of our colors and complexions and all of our cultures created in the image of God. Doesn't that tell you something about him? He's great. He's good. We put on the new. Many countries have these programs that go on the television of makeovers. And someone who is just kind of ordinary comes along and they take that person and if it's a lady, they do some makeup. Maybe some of the guys, I don't know. <laughs> they do some makeup. They change the hair. For me, they don't have a lot to work with. I don't think they'll invite me on the show. But they do all of these things and they change the looks of that person so that people who know them, they see them go into that room and everything changes in that room. The hair changes, the makeup changes, maybe even the glasses change. Maybe they get some, instead of glasses, they get the contact lenses or something. Whatever, all of it changes. And then the clothes. The places all of us wanted to shop but didn't have the deep pockets to shop there. These guys, they just provide it. And then the door opens, and then there's the reveal, and out they walk. And they've just looked in the mirror, and they can't believe it's them either. And they walk out, and everyone is amazed. Wow, this is a different person. You know what? When we leave church, that's how we ought to be. That taxi driver that dropped you at church should be thinking, what? happened to them. It only took an hour and 15 minutes, but something just happened. Wow, amen. It ought to be that way that we're being renovated, that we are allowing God to change us, God to change our hearts, to put on the new self which is in his image. The new self. To put on the new man is to give Christ, Jesus Christ the Lord, from heaven his place in our lives. We call him Lord, which means we serve him. We need to give him that place in our lives that really we serve him, we honor, and we reflect him. We reflect his image. So we put off the old self, we put on the new self. The first verse in our, our section today that we read, and therefore... As God's chosen people, wow, is that not a good place to be? God's chosen. I don't know how you grew up when it came for sports. And there was going to be two teams, but all of you are there in the ballpark. And everyone lines up. Did you choose a captain or two captains and they start choosing their team? Did they do that? Did you ever do that? Yeah. Yeah. Were you ever last to be chosen? It's no fun. I tell you what. When it was rugby, the captain quickly said, David, I was fast, I was big, and I could run through a crowd and just send them flying. <laughs> but when it came to some of the other games, and I won't get into those, sometimes I was there last. And then finally it was kind of, well, David, you're the last, so I guess you're on my team. I didn't like being the last, and so I guess you're on my team. 
the leftover. My friends, my brothers, my sisters, you are chosen. Amen. You in the back seat of the balcony, you are chosen. Amen. Wow. Therefore, because you are chosen and you are holy, you are special, you are set aside, chosen, holy, and not only chosen and holy, you are dearly loved. Amen. Hallelujah. Not good friends. Oh, uh, you know, tolerated. But holy, chosen, and dearly loved. Amen. Dearly loved. Oh, You put off the old, you put on the new, and then God is saying to us, because of who you are, because you're now in my image, holy, set apart, chosen, and dearly loved, now let's expand the clothing. Clothe yourselves with compassion, kindness, Humility, gentleness, patience. Amen. Does that come easy to most of you? Yeah, no hands, eh? Compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, patience. They don't come easily, but you know, when God renovates our hearts, it all starts to change. We realize, yes, we can do this, and yes, we must do this, because we want to honor God. We talked a couple of weeks ago about traffic in Addis, and I tell you, gentleness, kindness, patience are not part of what I see in traffic in Addis. It doesn't come naturally, and then you think, now how do I respond as a Christian with all of this stuff? I was in traffic one time in, in, in Arusha, and it's nothing like Addis, but it can get really, really bad. And there are times, and my hair is really thin, if I took a hair out and tried to put it between the vehicles, there wasn't room to put it. That's how close they get. And one day I was driving along, and this guy just kept pushing over, pushing over, pushing over, and there's no place to push. But he just kept coming. And then I got this idea, and I reached in my pocket, and I pulled up my cell phone, and I looked at him in the eye, and then I looked at the name on his car, and I said, I think I'll phone your boss. Oh, I tell you, the guy stopped. He pulled over. Sorry, sorry. Continue, continue, continue. <laughs> he didn't want a report of it. Maybe I shouldn't have done that. I'm sorry. <laughs> but it worked. And he had a laugh. I had a laugh. We all went on. And really, none of us got there any faster because of the traffic jam. But in daily life, never mind the traffic. In our daily life, do we put on that kindness? Do we show that gentleness? Do we show that compassion in our lives? Do we just show it to those that we do love, to those that we do know, or do we just show it in our lives? And he's telling us here to put on, put on the new self. And part of that new man is that man that reflects Jesus Christ. One who knows who they are, holy, chosen, and dearly loved by God, and therefore they serve Him, and they do it with compassion, with kindness, with humility, with gentleness, and patience. It's not always easy, but that's who we are. Amen? It's who we are, who we must be. And then he goes on a little bit further in the next one. If that's not enough, then he says, now bear with each other and forgive each other. Forgive one another if any of you has grievance against someone. Forgive as the Lord forgave you. The Lord has forgiven much, and we need to forgive much. We need to forgive daily. We need to make sure that those accounts are clear. An executive that I worked for some years ago, he asked me, he said, David, how do you do it? He had at least one failed mar marriage, maybe two home broken, all of those things that were going on. And he asked me about my family. And he said, how do you do it? And I said, three things. I said, it's all about forgiveness and it's about relationship. I said, I've forgiven myself. I'm good with myself. I'm okay. I'm con I, I, I have nothing that I beat myself up with or about. I'm not guilty about anything. 
It's done. I've taken care of it. I'm okay with myself. But more than that, I'm okay with God. I'm in right standing with God. He has forgiven me, and I am, in, I am right with God. And I said, as soon as I know I'm not right with God, I get right with God. I'm done. And then I said, I'm right with all the people around me. I take care of those accounts. And if I recognize I've offended someone, I'll go to them and I'll make it right. And if they come to me, I'm quick to apologize to make sure that I have forgiven and I am forgiven. So I said, therefore, I just go through life, enjoying life, because I'm good with myself, I'm good with God, and I'm good with those around me. Forgiveness is hard. There's some horrible, horrible things that men do to each other. And all you need to do is pick up a newspaper, listen to the news, and you know that there are horrific things that go on. And sometimes those things happen in our families. Sometimes they happen in our communities. Sometimes to our tribe. And we need to be people of forgiveness. A few years ago, I was in Arusha, and I was invited to the home of a pastor. He was actually a diplomat who was working with a tribunal for Rwanda. And he came value-added and planted a church in Arusha. I was ministering there, and in the evening, they invited me and another pastor to come for dinner. We had a beautiful dinner together, and afterward, he asked his nephew to drive me home, and it was about a 30-minute drive to where I was staying, just a little bit out of town. And as we were going on, I began to talk with this young man, and he was a brilliant young man, educated, from Rwanda, educated, articulate, and exhibited the grace of, of Christ. He was just really nice. And as we were going along, I started doing the calculation and I said to him, my friend, if I'm going somewhere I shouldn't, please stop me. But if you're willing to talk about it, will you tell me, where were you in April? And anyone from, no, from Rwanda knows that's when the genocide started. Millions were slaughtered in April. And he kept driving and he said, David, no problem. I'm glad to share my story with you. I said, where were you? What age were you? What happened in your life and family? And he said, no one so much as slapped me during that whole time. But I stood while the blood of my relatives splashed on me, on my clothes, and on my skin. And I thought the story will have to end here. He can't say more. But he said, and he told that story with such grace, he saw unspeakable things. But the next part of my question was, because I'm looking at a man, a young man, who has it all together. I said, how did you get through to who you are today? And he said, the forgiveness of Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The forgiveness of Christ. He said, I had to be able to forgive. I had to receive forgiveness. I had to give forgiveness. I had to love those people and forgive just as Christ had done. The pastor in the back seat, he kept inching forward, inching forward, inching forward. He was nearly in the front seat with us. <laughs> Listening to the story, he was entranced by all of this. It was fascinating and it was a holy moment. It was not just a story. This was not a BBC moment. This was a holy moment to hear of a brother who had unspeakable things done to him, but was ready to forgive and go on and still to minister in the power and the grace of Jesus Christ. Sometimes we hold it against someone because they didn't greet us this morning. Huh, I was standing at the door and they didn't even greet me. And look, there they are on the other side of their church, hands up, lifting, you know, and we get all bent out of shape, all worked up because someone didn't greet us. They didn't see us. They didn't hear us. Maybe they had something on their minds. What does the scripture said? Forgive them. If you have a grievance, forgive them. And we're coming to this table. We want to come with clean hands and clean hearts that we've forgiven. 
And maybe there's bigger stuff, and it's not going to be public stuff. I'm not going to ask you to come up here, but what I am going to ask you to do at the close of this message, I'm going to ask you to do that work and just forgive. And maybe it is a small stuff. Maybe it is just a real irritation in your life. And maybe it's something really, really big. But I'd ask you to let it go today. Give it to God and receive that freedom that comes from Him. Bear with each other. Forgive one another. Forgive as the Lord forgave you. God is love. He says in verses 12 and 13, And over all of these things put on love. I remember a a friend of mine back in Canada, (coughs) and she'd do something. She'd kind of shock and and all the rest of it, and she'd say, you got to forgive me. you got to love me. you got to love me. And sometimes we'd think, oh, okay, why did you have to say that first? Because we're just going to get it. You know, we're going to give it to her. But you got to love me. But love, when we do things in love, we receive things in love, it changes everything. Above all, put love, and love brings all of those compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, patience, and forgiveness brings it all together. God is love, and he that lives in love lives in God. Do you want to live in love? Do you want to live in God? Amen. May the love of Christ constrain us to be like him. And then there's things we need to let in. We need to let things in. And the first one is let the peace of God rule in your hearts. Open yourself up to let the peace of God. Don't let him make him try to push his way in. But let, let in, let in the peace of God. Let the peace of God rule in your hearts. Isaiah 26, thou wilt keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on thee. Why? Because he trusts you. You can trust him. You can trust him. Trust him and allow that peace of God into your life. Allow the peace of God to rule in your hearts. Don't make it be an invasion of peace. Not a takeover. But it's a surrender where you just say, I trust you. And allow God's peace to rule in your hearts. And when we allow his rule in our hearts by trustful submission, we recognize he is the one who can speak to the storm and say, peace, be still. He can do that in our hearts. Peace, be still. Allow him to do it. Let him in. Let in the peace of God. And then he continues on to tell us another, let in. Let in the Word of God. Let the message of Christ, the Word of God, dwell among you richly, richly, as you teach, as you admonish one another, with all wisdom, through psalms and hymns and songs from the Spirit. And in a few minutes before we go to the table, we're going to sing a song that comes from a psalm which was written by David in his penitence. Create in me a clean heart. And when you know the psalm, Psalm 51, then the song becomes even sweeter. And some of the expressions we use to to worship our God, they come right from Scripture. But they become richer because the Word of God dwells in us. We have let the Word of God in. We have let the Word of God penetrate. We have let the Word of God be our teaching, our admonition our joy, and our encouragement. The Word of God is living, is active, is sharper than any two-edged sword. It penetrates even to the dividing of soul and spirit. Let it in. Let the Word penetrate your heart, your mind. (coughs) And then we have to let a few things out. Let out. Let out loyal service. Verse 17, whatever you do, whether in word or deed, do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus. I love you, and I love that you are loyal to IEC as your home church. But you know what I love more? Is you are loyal to our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. 
Serve in loyalty, knowing you serve the Lord Jesus Christ. It is his name, it's his banner that you carry. Let out that loyal service. Don't keep it in. Sometimes people say to me, you know, I've been thinking for two years, I'd like to do such and such around the church. And I'm thinking, why? Why you've been waiting two years? Come on. Let's find a way that we can involve you and that you can serve. Let out that loyal service. You have talents. We need musicians. We need keyboard. Look at this band today. And we need more, just like them. I was in a church in Arusha, and the, the choir stood up, and I saw one electric guitar, and then the choir stood up, and these four guys stand up, and they all begin to play. And I'm thinking, wow, one is great, two is good, three is something else, four is awesome. Well, I tell you, if you can play two, number five and six, you're welcome too. We need you. We need your talents. We need those keyboards. We need all of those instruments. You play violin. If you play whatever it is, come on up here. Offer yourself in loyal service. I nearly joined the worship team last night. I was here as they were, they were practicing, preparing, getting ready, and I was in the back here. And I was watching them, and boy, I tell you, from here, you think you can do it. When you're all the way back there, I'm telling you, and I'm seeing these guys, and I was seeing you, even though you weren't here yet. And I was thinking, my goodness, how awesome it's going to be. And I was thinking, what can I pick up? What can I play? And this drummer, he wouldn't let go of his sticks. <laughs> But maybe you have that talent. Come and serve. Bring that service and serve loyally to the Lord Jesus Christ. How different life would be if even the ordinary, ordinary activities of life were done in service in the name of Jesus Christ and for his sake, for Christ's sake and in his name. Another thing we need to do is let out, we need to let out is thankful service. Loyal service in the name of and for the Lord Jesus Christ. But he says, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. We give thanks that we can do it. We give thanks that we can serve. We serve thankfully. And I tell you, when you serve thankfully, it gets a whole lot easier. Serve giving thanks. Let out that service. And let it be a thankful service. Whatever you do, whether in word or deed, do it in the name of the Lord. Ephesians 5.20, we should give thanks always for all things. The Lord has done great things for us. Amen. And he is still doing great things for us. Amen. Amen. Therefore, let our praise, our thanks always be in our mouths. In his giving, in his taking away, still blessed be the name of the Lord. And one other thing that we need to let out is heartfelt service. Whatever you do, work at it with all of your heart as working for the Lord and not for men. And that's from verse 23 of the same chapter, and we'll touch on that next week. But let your service be heartfelt. You do it with heart. Not just because you're good at it. Not just because someone asked you to do it. But you do it because you come to it with heart. Today we put off our old selves. We put on the new self. And we allow God to do the renovation. And as the worship team comes, as we sing together, I would ask you to do that work of allowing God, actually allow God to do that work, to do that renovation in your heart. We put off, we put on, and then we let in. We let in the peace of God, let in the word of God, and we let out that loyal, thankful, and heartfelt service. But it all begins with a prayer just as David prayed, in, Isaiah, or in Psalm 51, Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from your presence, and don't 
take your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of my salvation. As we sing that, don't just sing it as a song, but pray it. And ask God to do that work in you. Maybe there's a forgiveness you need to give, and you can do that through prayer. If you'd like someone to pray with you, just come right down here. And one of the elders, one of the prayer team will pray with you during this worship song as we prepare our hearts for full renovation. And we prepare our hearts to come to the Lord's table to receive, to remember all that he's done for us. Maybe we failed to put off. Maybe we failed to put on. Maybe we failed to forgive. Maybe we failed to let in. Maybe we've neglected in the letting out. Whatever it is, let's take care of it today. And I tell you, after we've taken the table, we're going to go out of here singing. It's a happy day. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Let's stand together.